home to Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips. That's this show that you're watching. If you're watching a different show right now, I don't know how you're hearing this. I'm Lester Pips, and this is my show. I'm the with Lester Pips that was referenced in the title of the show, which is Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips. What I do is I make sure all y'all know what you need to know to survive the apocalypse, which if you aren't aware, we's kind of in a mini apocalypse right now. I mean, I wouldn't call it like the apocalypse, but I would call it an apocalypse because there's big, big time coronavirus out there trying to make sure everybody gets COVIDs. And if you get COVIDs, right, well, then you might be dead, which I don't want you to be dead. I'm hoping you all be alive forever. I hope you all live forever. I don't know if you know this about me, but I want all the people I ever met to live forever. Uh, that's not canon, but it's true now. Uh, <laughs> uh, and look, you might be thinking, <clears throat> oh, there's this guy who's talking about apocalypses. He's saying his name is Lester Pips and he's on my screen right now. Should I click off? No, you should stay here because let me tell you, I'm qualified to talk about how you survive an apocalypse. I really am, you know? Some folks think, oh, who the hell is this guy? Well, I'll tell you who the hell this guy is. This guy is a guy who's checking his phone right now. How rude. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna not do it again. Um, uh, this guy's a guy who prior to all these COVIDs being out in the air trying to get inside your nose, uh, I was going around the country and also sometimes the whole world going door to door to any open microphone situation where I could possibly get inside, giving speeches that are very important to everybody in the whole world because they are speeches about how you're going to survive an apocalypse, right? I am self-appointed master of touring apocalypse ticks lecturers. I am the apocalypse tip man, uh, according to me. And also to uh, anybody who's heard me talk because they know that what I know is important for them to know. So in my travels, I spent a lot of time at these various situations where there was open microphones, okay? And yeah, a lot of them were comedy related and in the Los Angeles area, but not all. And afterwards, I would get people in the audience to say, hey, I would like to be on your email list. And then when the COVID struck and the COVID was out there saying, uh-uh, it's not just your nose I'm getting in. I I'm going to try to get in through your eye. I'm going to try to get in through your mouth. I'm going to try to make sure you get COVID. Well, <clears throat> well uh, when that happened, well, I, I sent an email out to everybody on, my, everybody on my email list, everybody who ever signed up for an email. And I said, hey, uh, you want to be on a show talking about how you're going to survive apocalypse? And that's what this show here is. This show is that show where me, uh, Lester Pips, very big time apocalypse tip man, goes around making sure y'all know how you're going to survive an apocalypse from down here in my bunker, which if you're looking behind me and you're thinking, man, that's a bedroom. Well, technically it's a bedroom in a bunker, but also it's not my bunker. It's a fake picture of a bunker, okay? Because I don't want you to see my real bunker and get jealous. I don't want that for you. I want you to feel like your bunker could be just as good as mine. And you could have one as good as this, but not as good as mine. Ah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So after I yell for a while, then I bring on my guests who also are Apocalypse Tips people, right? Or at least people who's interested in it. And they tell you how they've been getting through things. And mostly it's me talking to them, trying to find out what's going on. And man, do I got some good guests for y'all tonight. Okay. First up, coming up very soon, we got a Major League Baseball fan named Tobis Jonas. I'm excited to get to him. We're not quite there yet, but I'm excited to get there. After that, we're going to talk to uh, the owner of Piper's Pets and Precious Animals, whose name is Piper. Surprise! <laughs> and then later, we're going to talk to Senior Safety Manager Barry Watson. I don't know what he what he's the safety manager of, but I'm excited to find out. Before we get to that, I do have to say, um, look, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, well, okay, so far I haven't gotten any apocalypse tips. I've just gotten a guy telling me that he knows apocalypse tips. Well, fair enough. Let me get to the most important one, okay? When you're thinking about how you're going to survive an apocalypse, the first very most important thing you got to ask yourself is, well, what's important about the future? What do I want to make sure there is in the future? What matters to survive from present humanity? And obviously that is Louisiana culture because I'm not just broadcasting from a bunker. I'm broadcasting from a bunker in my backyard outside Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is where this accent is accurate too, if you did not know this. Uh, please don't ask about it. Uh, speaking of asking though, real quick, uh, if you got questions at any point for me or any of my guests, you throw them in the chat here on the Twitch. Well, I'll, I'll read them out loud and then I'll answer them or my guests will or both, which I mean, if we both answer one question, man, you got a two for one. What a good deal. Uh, you know how I said I wasn't going to check my phone before? Well, I, I checked it again <laughs> because I, I was worried it might be one of my guests saying, oh, hey, we have a problem. It's not. We don't have any problems. There's no problems ever. There's never been a problem. I don't have problems. I'm Lester Pips. 
Um, where was I in my very important speech? Oh, yes. So, right. So you got to ask yourself what's important. And it's Louisiana culture. And so given that that is true, and we all know that it is, you know what you got to preserve. And that is, and you can say this at home with me, talk to your camera, talk to your cat, talk to your wife, talk to your dad, talk to your spouse, whatever you got, and tell them that the most important thing you got to make sure there is in the future is the recipe and all necessary ingredients to Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Spicy Chicken Strips. Because what better way to taste Louisiana, taste New Orleans, than on them spicy chicken strips? Mm -mm. I don't want to live in the future without those, I'll tell you that. So what I've been doing, uh, prior, well, you know, while I was going door to door to all these comedy mics, I would also be stopping at all the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen franchise locations and saying, hey, you going to give me the recipe or what? Cause I gotta have that. I would ask more nicely than that, but um, I'm trying to say it like slightly different. So the same, every episode doesn't start exactly the same. You know what I mean? Oh, look at that. That one guy kind of something's in the chat. What's up that one guy kind of something. Um, right. So I would do that. Now I'm underground, right? So I can't be going to all these Popeyes, but I am, I am helping folks steal the recipe. Okay. If you know of a Popeyes location, and you want to know how to get in there and steal, steal the recipe for me, I will tell you. All you have to do is post in the chat which location, and I'll tell you how to get in. I got the schematics to every Popeye's down here in the bunker, okay? And that's something I've been working on, uh, 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 you know, because I'm only streaming once a week, right? I got to film the rest of my time. I don't only exist on Tuesday evenings. <laughs> so, oh, oh, this is an important note. I'm going to be moving the show, right? It's not going to be Tuesdays anymore, starting in September. We're doing a show September 1st, but then... We also doing a show September 3rd. That's a Thursday. It's going to be at six o'clock Pacific time, 9 PM Eastern time, uh, whatever time it is in between there, if you in between there. And uh, the reason that's important is because it's not going to be Tuesdays anymore. And then it's going to be Thursdays, right? So cool. But, but guess what? That means next week you get two for one. That one got kind of something you get two for one. You do it on Tuesday, you turn on Thursday. And then from then on out, it's Thursdays at six, baby. Uh, and I don't say baby very often, but this was an appropriate time. Now, um, uh, I feel like I lost the thread of what I was trying to say. And I hate it when I do this. Hold on, I'm gonna take a little, little sippy of the water. Now listen, um, somebody sent me this uh, water beer koozie, uh, but I don't, there we go, we can see it now. I don't know what this company is, Sidewise Brand Storytelling. I don't know what this company is. They are not a sponsor, but they do keep my La Croix cold. Mm. Okay. What was I saying? <laughs> Legit don't remember. Um, Probably something about how, oh, right. So yeah, so yeah, post a location of a Popeye's franchise location and I will tell you how to steal the recipe because look, we found out recently on the show that uh, Popeye's is a donor to the big old Donnie J, Donnie J T-Man campaign. And uh, we also found out last week, I can't say his name. I can't do it. I can't say that last name. I can't get there. I can get to Donnie. I can get to Jay. Can't get to the T word. So, uh, so I'm not going to, but yeah, uh, if you know, if, you know, I'm not trying to support them financially, but I'm trying to steal that recipe. And so in the future, there can be, uh, 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 instead of a Popeye's chicken, there's going to be a Pips's chicken and it's going to be delicious. Oh, great. We got one in the comments. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, Dedo's. Oh boy. I have a hard time reading for some reason. Dedo's Tor TV. What? Dedo, Dedo Nator TV. Detonator TV. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I have a hard time reading. It says 14th and Liberty in downtown Chicago. Oh, okay. So that one's got a big basement, right? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the building next door and go down into the basement from there. Because if you ask nicely, it is a bank. So this might be a little bit of a challenge. But if you ask nicely, you say, hey, can I get into your vault? Because I got to get next door to the Popeyes, they'll say, oh yeah, we do have a door into the Popeyes basement down the vault. They'll let you in, you go in, and then you gotta knock twice on the grate there that you're gonna see in the wall, okay? Uh, it's on the right, when you enter the door from the bank, there's a, there's a, there's a grate on the wall, you knock twice, because that lets, uh, that lets the guy who lives in the vents know that you're there for me, okay? His name is, uh, his name is uh, Charleston Tani, Charleston Tani. You're gonna wanna say, Charleston, I'm here for the recipe. He's going to lead you in, okay? He's going to lead you through the vents. You're going to go up the stairs, okay? There's stairs and the vents. Don't question that. Uh, you're going to go up there. You're going to get into the kitchen. And, and then when they're not looking, you got to be careful. You got to make sure it's when they're not looking. Because if they're looking, then they're going to catch you. But when they're not looking, then you go in, pull the recipe off the whiteboard. 
they, they, they use tape to hold the recipe under the whiteboards at Popeye's. They don't have tack boards. They don't have computers. They have whiteboards and they don't write on them. They tape stuff to them. Okay. Then you got to get back out a different way because uh, Charles and Tani doesn't let people into the vents the other way. So you're going to have to make your way out the front door without getting caught. Anyway, if you succeed, do let me know. Now, it's time to get to our guests, which I'm very excited about. Uh, I told you that coming up later, there's going to be Senior Safety Manager Barry Watson. I told you that before that, there's going to be Piper's Pets and Precious Animals owner Piper. But right now, we got a Major League Baseball fan named Tobus Jonas. Tobus, I hope you're still on the stream because I really like to talk to you. And by stream, I mean Zoom call. Tobus? Hey, there he is. Tobus, welcome to the show. Hey. Hey, Lester. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, very excited to have you. Now, uh, you know, you responded to my email saying you had something very important. You wanted to talk to me about the baseball season. Yeah, the uh, baseball season. I just want everybody to know that uh, everything's okay. Everybody's safe. Uh, every, everybody's having a good time. America's pastime. Well, that's interesting because I did hear that there's been a, a number of cases of COVID in the Major League Baseball where there's a bunch of people who's, who's out there. There's, ca- there's not only catching pop flies, there's also catching COVIDs. Yeah, a lot of people out there getting sick. Uh, a lot of play- teams have to be shut down and everybody else is having fun and having a good time, having playing around. Interesting, because you started out by saying everybody's okay, but now you are, you are aware of the fact that a lot of people's getting the COVIDs. Everybody that I can see right now seems to be uh, to, to be okay. I'm actually in the stadium right now. Oh, yeah. What, what, what field is that? I forget what, what fan, what kind of a fan you are. Oh, oh I feel like you're trying to trick me, Lester, because I told you off air, I can't tell you what, what team I'm a fan of. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I wasn't trying to trick you. I just truly forgot. So you are right. So, so you explain how that works. Cause you, cause, cause most people who's fans of baseball, they've got one team that they's a fan of and they only go to those games. Well, I'm not just a fan Lester. I'm also an employee. So oh. what happened is they're supposed to fill all these stands with uh, cardboard cutouts, but they ran out of cardboard cutouts so they started paying guys like me to come and sit in the stand and pretend to be a cardboard cutout, pretending to be a real person. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. So I remember that they were saying that they was going to have these fake fans up in the stands because they weren't going to have real people there because the real people could get no, the I'm COVID. a real fan. I'm a real fan of a team I can't tell you about. Okay. Well, okay, so that's interesting. So uh, is there a bunch of people who's, who's pretending to be cardboard cutouts in the stands every game? Uh, well, there's uh, Bobby over there. There's uh, Chuck Chuckton over there, and Chuck Lenny. Uh, you know, it's 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 pretty late at night, so not everybody's here yet. Yeah, as far as I know, it's uh, it's 9 p.m. on the West Coast because uh, I do the show uh, uh, obviously at uh, 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 7 p.m. Central Time, just because that's convenient for me here in Louisiana. But I don't. Be- uh, I'm sorry, 11 p.m. Central Time. I I, I did my math wrong. Um, but I don't believe there's any kind of game going on right now. No, no, there's not a game going on right now, but they like us to get here nice and early because we, you know, have to be pretend that we're not real people up and moving around and stuff. Oh yeah. They want you to get into the seats, get comfortable, make sure you don't move for the rest of your life. They just, well, get into the seats and don't move. They don't really care too much about how comfortable we are. Wow. (laughs) They never really asked. They never really asked me. That sounds like a rough job. I mean, is this a situation where prior to COVID you had a different job, got laid off, and then during the COVID you're like, how am I going to make money? Oh, I know. I'll pretend to be cardboard. Yeah, yeah. Before the uh, COVID, I was a scalper. Okay, so you you worked at the field already. Yeah, so I was near the field. I was near the field. Yeah. And what city is that that you were scalping in? Uh oh, Lester. I feel (laughs) like you tried to get me again. (laughs) Oh, you got me. Uh oh. (laughs) <laughs> no, I was living in my car down the street from the stadium. I was scalping tickets. And then uh, when everything get, got shut down and then eventually they started the games back up, they were like, hey, you look like you'll do almost anything for a buck. Why don't you come pretend to be cardboard? Wow. And you was just down. I mean, I hope they play in you well. Uh, I don't know. Well, I would tell you what the minimum wage is here, but that might give you a clue as to where I am. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. I have every minimum wage for every state memorized in my head. I, you have all the schematics of all the Popeye's chicken. Seems like you might know that. That's true, because Popeye's pays their workers minimum wage, which actually is something, another reason why we should be stealing from them, not supporting them financially. Um, but, but I can't tell you where I'm at. I even covered up my hat so you can't see. Oh, that's not a hat that comes white. That's one that you taped over. Yeah, I greeked it. You you what? I greeked it. I covered it with tape. It's it's I don't know. It's Greek or something. Oh, that's a Greek thing. I don't know. I don't know Greek things. I guess I know things about Greece and I know Greek people, but I guess I don't know Greek things. Yeah, this is. I I mean I don't know why they call it that, but it don't try to guess from the color either because it's like a one of those Fred Durst hats, so it's oh. not the right color of the team. It's a different color. Okay. Well, no. Okay. I won't try to guess. I, I don't want to get you in trouble at your job. It sounds like you really need it. Yeah. I, you know, it's a COVID-19 times. Mm -hmm. Now I got yeah. a question for you in the chat from that one guy, Connor something. He wants to know, uh, has Mr. Jonas ever considered a gig at one of those silver paint as one of those silver painted robot guys? I think they make pretty decent tips and they don't have to move much. Oh yeah. Well, I got, I, I was doing that uh down at the boardwalk for a little while and then uh i got real sick and oh. then like i started getting a bunch of other people sick and so they said i couldn't come down to the boardwalk anymore and that was pre-covid or during covid yeah that was like right off the top like early on okay so that was you had coronavirus and you was out there doing your robot shtick and letting people put their, their hands near your money and uh uh uh, uh and getting what? themselves sick you know, because he's putting, get, he's putting money in your tested. hat. I didn't get tested. No, I, I, okay. Well, not, not getting tested doesn't mean you didn't have it there, but I got to tell you that, Tobus Jonas. Well, I figured I would have got tested if I had the coronavirus. Yeah, I was like coughing a bunch, trouble breathing, yeah. stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, you had you were <laughs> okay. Let me get this straight. So at one point, right after coronavirus, you you were like, "Oh, baseball's canceled. I can't be doing scalping no more. So I'm gonna be a yeah. silver painted robot down at the boardwalk, but I'm coughing yeah. on everybody." Boy, oh boy, you was you was giving COVID I, to everybody at the boardwalk. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. My tips were real bad because I be trying to like stand still, and then I just start like shaking with coughs. Oh no, oh no, and so. so so, I would have had to quit pretty soon anyway because I wasn't making good tips. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, you don't make good tips when you when you uh, are infecting folks with a, with a big time big time disease like COVIDs. Now that's that's tough. So between then and now, after you was a stationary robot and now you're a stationary cardboard man, uh, yeah. uh, did you do any jobs like <laughs> at at any point was you a piece of paper people could write on? Uh, P oh, say that again. At any point, were you a piece of paper people could write letters on? You know, stationary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they would use me. The The team manager would write on me and then, like, send me to – he'd be like – they would, all right, so they told me – like, the manager would tell me a message, and he'd be uh -huh. like, take this message to the first basement. Oh, Lester, I'm not going to tell you who it was. <laughs> okay. You almost tricked me again. Uh, you know, honestly, I didn't. You actually led yourself to that one, but I, I appreciate it nonetheless. I forgive you. So the, he would tell me a message. He'd say, go tell them the message. And then I would always forget. So, yeah, they would start writing the message on my shoulder or on my face. Mm -hmm. And then they'd push me out the door. And then, yeah. But I had to, like, stop doing that because it was, like, a lot of walking. And I was, like, feeling real sick and stuff. Oh, so you was sick at that time too. Yeah, I suppose if you never got tested, you probably never got cured either. It lingered. It really lingered. How you feeling now? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay now. I just kind of like got this cough. Oh no. And I'm having trouble breathing and stuff. Okay, so you're the same as you was then. What? I mean, that's the same symptoms you described prior. I guess maybe you're doing a little better because you look like you got pretty good color. You know, you look you look like you, 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 your body's well, I okay. I sit out in the sun all day. Sure, I guess that'll do it. Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't have it, man. I never got tested. Right. Again, it's not so. So it's not one of those situations where if you get tested, then you could have it. It's if you have it, then you get tested. No. Nah. 
that doesn't sound right. Well, I was talking to to uh, Clompy. Uh huh. That's what I call him, Clompy. Yeah, and, he's got a different name and, before, but that's cool. Well, you know, now we're a little more familiar. I figured I'd bring you in to the inner circle. Okay. And uh, Lambo. And, you know, we were all talking and we were like, uh, yeah, we all just kind of, we all, yeah, none of us got tested. So we're all doing pretty okay. Y'all, y'all ain't just like sitting up in the stands coughing on each other, is you? Uh, well, I mean, like, you know, no, we're supposed to be real still. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, look, I'm so sorry to hear that you have COVIDs, but I'm glad that you use living with it without dying, which is, which is good. Yeah. You know? But I Dude, don't want to. If you want to feel bad, you should feel bad that they had to cancel the game tomorrow. Oh, they did. They had to cancel the game tomorrow because everybody's sick. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. If you was at one point taking letters to everybody and giving them COVID, and now you sit in the stands giving the rest of them COVIDs, huh? I was the yeah. letter. Ah, uh, you're right. I know. Yeah, you were stationary. Yeah, you had three stationary jobs. Good. That was a good. Uh, that was a good uh, uh, insight into your life. Uh, but I do. Yeah, I do feel bad that the games have to be canceled. That's too bad. You know, people like baseball. Yeah. So I figure if I just kind of keep sitting here, they probably got it. They got to pay me, right? Well, I don't know your contract situation, but I'm guessing it's probably you get paid by the hour during the game. No, dude, I told man, I told you I didn't contract anything. Oh, I didn't contract okay. anything. You don't have a contract to work? Have they paid you at all? Tobin. Uh, well, they said like checks in the mail. It's a checks in the mail kind of situation. Thomas, was you approached by an official from the MLB or were you approached by somebody who you thought might be skeevy? Oh, he was, uh, he was, fr he had a t-shirt that said the anti-cardboard coalition. Oh no. He said, we're trying to reduce the world's, I was coughing a lot. I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but he uh -huh. was something about like, we're trying to reduce the world's need for cardboard. So we're trying to get people back in the stands. Oh no. To, and he was talking a lot about like how the robots are stealing my job. And the cardboard robots. Well, and I don't know anything about cardboard robots, but I do know it sounds like what happened to you was uh, there was there was a guy out there who was trying to recruit people with COVID to get inside MLB stadiums, give all the cardboard cutouts COVID so that people would have to get rid of them cardboard cutouts. I mean, that would make sense if I had it, but well, I told you I didn't get tested. So, so no, I'm, I'm okay. No, I, I know you didn't get tested there, Chobis, but I'm, I've never been more sure in my life that somebody has COVID. Uh, now, uh, Andre Fleek wants to know, is Tobis related to the Jonas Brothers? Yeah, that's a good question, Andre Fleek. Are you related to the, to the Jonas Brothers? Man, they, okay, they used to be my family. Yeah. And, then, like, we were riding around on the tour bus and stuff. They're my second cousins once removed. Oh, okay. And wow. we were riding around on the tour bus and stuff. And they had to cancel their tour because they all got real sick. And then, like suddenly they can't return my phone calls anymore. Oh, wow. So they was having, they was having a surprise tour, a, a reunion tour since breaking up a while ago, uh, uh, just before the COVID situation happened. That's crazy. No, man. No, 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 no. This was before all that. This was in May. Okay. We, we, okay. But yeah, COVID, sorry, way before May. Okay. So uh, Tobias, it seems like you don't know too much about uh, <laughs> this virus that you for sure have, but uh, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that you had a falling out with your cousins. Look, I don't know what I know or what I don't know because yeah. I never got tested. So okay. how can I have it when I know nobody ever told me that I have it? Yeah, look, I'm not going to be able to explain this to you because I already tried and you you kept repeating yourself. So instead, I'm going to move on to the next question in the chat, which also comes from Andre Fleek. Andre Fleek would like to know, does Jonas get free hot dogs? Free? Well, all right. So the guy selling the hot dogs, he had to like, he had to, he had to go home because he was feeling real sick. Oh, God. And so I, he, they were like, you pass out those hot dogs. So then I was passing out the hot dogs and I got free hot dogs like that. Wow. But then they so, said, 
then they said all the people eating hot dogs were getting sick. So I, I guess there was something wrong with the hot dogs. Man, I've heard about super spreaders, but you are a super duper spreader. You, you, you. I mean, wow, you spreading COVID every every job you get. First, first, uh, you use a use a robot on the streets uh, and you're giving people COVID. Then somehow you manage to turn yourself into a piece of paper, uh, and people at the at the at the at the stadiums trying to pass you around me and you pass around COVID. Then then use a cardboard cutout sneezing on everybody giving them COVID or coughing, I suppose. And and then for a day you was a hot dog vendor giving people COVID. I mean, man, you gotta go home, dude. I got some bad luck. Well I'm gonna keep being around all these sick people. I can't believe like, you know, all I got is this cough and I'm having trouble breathing. Yeah. And my fever's pretty bad. Yeah. But when I sit out in the hot, hot sun, uh, you know, and it gets to be like 98, 99 outside, then I can't really tell I have a fever. Well, that, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. You hot out then, and you hot in, you just hot. <sighs> Tobis, I, I hope you don't die. I hope you don't infect anybody else. I do think you should go home, but I want you to stick around, okay? Because we're going to move on to my next guest real soon. But before we do, uh, yeah. I got one more question for you. It's coming to, it's actually for me, but I'd love for you to answer it as well. It comes yeah. to me uh, through my publicist, uh, at Ezra Partier on Instagram, at Ezra Partier on Twitter. You got questions yeah. for any, any my for me? You send them there, or you come to the chat. You you uh, you do it in in the Twitch stream. But this one came to me from a guy on on Instagram whose name is at Who is Sam Sibilski, and uh -huh. huh, he looks kind of like you if you weren't wearing a baseball hat. That's interesting. But I am wearing baseball hat. Right? No, use two different guys. I'm just saying, if you weren't wearing him, you'd look just like him. Yeah, but I – well, I mean, obviously, we're two different guys. I am wearing baseball hat. Right. So he wants to know, do you ever get trapped in your bunker? Oh, that's – okay. So, yeah, actually, while I was in construction of the bunker, I did for a time uh, find that I could not open the door because I did forget to put a handle on the inside, which if you build in a bunker, let me just say, number one piece of advice, dig down deep. Number two, make sure there's a, the handle on the inside of your door or your bunker because you're going to want to get back out because it's not done yet. And what I had to do was uh, dig a hole up through the ground, uh, climb my way out, and then open the door from the outside and then fill back in the hole. It was a complicated process. Tobis, have you ever been stuck inside a bunker? Yeah, this guy, uh, he, was, it, he was telling me uh, a while back he couldn't get the, the ceiling to hold up on his bunker, uh -huh. so he had to go get some more supplies. And then... Uh, and then uh, yeah, so I was like holding it up when he went to the the lows, and uh, and then yeah, when he got back, it was cool and everything. And then yeah, I don't know, like he got real sick, he died or something. So Damn I'm just kind of like posting up. I, that's kind of like where I'm crashing these days, actually. Oh wow, you live in a bunker. Well, I think you should go back there and stop spreading the virus to everybody. But I do. It is interesting to me that one you did briefly spend time as a stationary support beam. That's very cool. Now, Tobis, uh, I do need to get my next guest on here. But uh, again, stick around. You got questions for for her? Feel free to ask them. Uh, my next. Bye. <laughs> bye for now. <laughs> uh, my next guest is uh, a woman who owns a business, and that business is called Piper's Pets and Precious Animals. And her name, well, it's Piper. Piper, uh, uh, please come on the show. All right. Am I on? You are. Welcome, Piper. Thank Hello. You how are you? Well, I'm doing I'm doing okay. I just found out that uh, a friend of mine has, for sure has the coronavirus, but you know, oh, other that's, than that. That's really unfortunate. I hope they do well. I hope they get better. Yeah, me too. Me too. How are you, Piper? I'm good. I definitely don't have COVID. Um, oh, I good. suppose that's started. I don't have those symptoms, so check off on that. Happy to um, Yeah. Um, but other than that, I've been just working really hard on my business and just trying to save as many animals as I can. Well, that's great. I mean, so that's 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 why you wanted to come on the show. That's what we want to hear about. You have a business where you try to save pets and precious animals. That's very exciting. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means for you? Sure. So as you are aware, we are in apocalypse, quarantine, oh, yeah. COVID, you oh, name yeah. it, we're going through everything. And so everybody's mental health is just at its worst. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me seven months ago that, wait a second, you know what makes me feel better about myself? Animals. So I just thought, well, I couldn't get into veterinary school. 
And I just decided I might as well create a business in saving as many animals as I, as I can. Well, that, that is very honorable. You know, what, you's, what you've done is you've, you've taken something that you love and you've made a way to, to t- turn that love into uh, something that benefits the whole planet, which is really exciting. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, Piper. I'm glad you're doing it. I am too. In fact, I actually have a small presentation that I want to share with you, our guests, as well as our viewers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's exciting. You know, if you're at home, you're watching the show and you're thinking, I don't want to see a presentation. Well, too bad. You're going to. It's going to be a great one. So Piper's Pets and Precious Animals. And what I'm going to do, I wanted to show you some of our favorite fellows or fellas uh, that are in our shelter just so they can be adopted and have a forever home. So here is our first once I get this presentation going. Ah, yes. Oh god. Our little our little angel Marcus. He's 15 months old. Um his favorite food is leftover Chinese food from ripe garbage. In fact, that's actually the first time that I actually met Marcus. Uh-huh. Cuz in the middle of the night, I just happened to be walking. All of a sudden, I hear like these sounds like <sighs> and I turn around and I see Marcus just scavenging for scraps over by the um uh, you know that Chinese food place over on Main Street? Yeah, he's he was looking for some egg oh, rolls. Oh, yeah, because he was in New Orleans. Yeah, so you, I, I got you. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, so I thought, hey, I got some scraps here too, and he we're inseparable since. But of course, that's me, Leo's Chinese, right? Yes, yes, okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. They're about six blocks from a Popeyes, which we, we can get into how you break into that if we get uh, to, yes. But I'd love to hear more of your presentation. I'm sorry to derail. Oh, not a problem. I'm sure Marcus also loves Popeyes. I haven't tried that yet. I'll have to make sure I give him some. Anywho, Marcus is adorable. And his favorite pastime is chasing little kids at the town green, too. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. When you bring him on walks, the kids and how excited they get. You hear a lot of, ah! But, I mean... That, to me, is just kids having fun. And Marcus is just having fun, too. I mean, look how adorable his face is. He's got black beady eyes. He's got Uh bright, sharp teeth. You don't need to bring him to the dentist. Yeah. And Well, I got to ask you real quick there, Piper. Um, Is this what a weasel is? Yes, you're right. I knew it. (laughs) Yeah. Weasels weasel. aren't often what people keep as pets because they are uh, uh, mean and dangerous quite often, uh, especially for little kids, which mm-hmm. it sounds real bad that he's chasing little kids around by the green because if he's in your shelter, you should be you should maybe be keeping him inside the shelter, not trying to let him out and chase around those little kids. Uh, but you know what? I'm keeping him on leash. He'll be all right for most of it. And uh-huh. after all, he's got it's the character of Marcus that you grow to love and you learn to forgive everything else. Okay, so yeah, if you was to compare him to like, let's say a TV character, what TV character is Marcus? Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, because I mean, if I'm going to fall in love with the character of Marcus, then I want to know what that character is. Because for me, Marcus. I'd say, yeah, the, the, one of my most beloved characters, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, 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 let's see. I mean, I really like uh, Lois Lane from the Superman movie. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. I was also thinking, uh, what was that TV show? Angry Beavers. Oh, yeah, like Two that. Angry Beavers? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I remember that show. Yeah, he, he does seem like kind of he might be an angry beaver. That makes sense. A little bit. Like an angry weasel, which I think, in my opinion, weasels are just the beavers of the land. Exactly. Let's move on to our next animal who's looking for a forever home. And it's our oh beautiful God. Clarabelle. <laughs> it's our beautiful Clarabelle, 27 months old. Her favorite <laughs> food is acidic fish over at Williams Pond. Okay, um, I'm sorry. What the fuck is that? Uh, this is an opos- uh, opossum. I actually recently learned that it's actually possum, not opossum. Uh-huh. So I learned something new today. Anywho. <laughs> Um, yeah, Clarabelle loves acidic fish, um, over by William's, uh, pond, um, a little, th- a little special characteristic that Clarabelle is learning to overcome and embrace. She does have a minor addiction to black tar heroin. Oh, no. So, I know, it's, it's unfortunate, but that doesn't mean she can't be adopted. It just means that with a lot of TLC, love and care, 
uh, Clarabelle can overcome her struggles. It just means that you have to get some black tar heroin and wane her off and she'll be back on track. Well, I, I do hope that, that that is true because I, I would love for this animal to not be addicted to heroin. I think as scary looking as that animal is, and I'm gonna tell you right now, that's a scary looking animal, okay? Because it, it looks like it's wearing like fingerless gloves, which is a sign of scary people, I think. Uh, all scary people wear fingerless gloves and all scary animals look like they wear in fingerless gloves. Yeah, but contrary to the belief though, Clarabelle is an absolute angel. Like she's so precious and you know, you'd think like with an animal without any fur it's gonna be uncomfortable to pet, softest thing in the world. Have you ever pet a naked mole rat, no. a naked animal? Well, you should actually relieves a lot of stress well I, I hope that it does for some folk uh wow uh, piper if you was to describe clarabelle as let's say a character from a tv show uh or movie uh, uh what would clarabelle be mm, another great question you know and please don't uh, say we're too angry beavers <laughs> oh you caught me on that one but i'm not going to um you know that horror movie called, uh, ooh, you know, there's a horror Omen? movie where it's the like, Omen? it's not the omen. It's like, it's almost like a talking bear, but instead of it like crying like a bear, it actually screams of its last victims. It's like, it's not insidious or something like that. But anyhow. Oh, insidious is scary. I've seen that one. There's a lot of, there's, there's, there's that big flat, fat blob man. That guy's mm. scary. Yeah. Well, Clarabelle reminds me of that character in a horror movie. I'm going to go ahead and assume it's the bear from Midsommar. Hey, can I just chime in really quick? Please do. Uh, do Clarabelle really How are you feeling, by the way? <laughs> What's that? How are you feeling, by the way? Oh, you know, it comes and it goes. My consciousness, you know, it oh, fades no. in and out. I kind of drift off and then I come back. But I just saw this crazy looking thing on the on the screen here. It kind of reminds me of Chris Maloney's character from uh, Law and Order SVU. Mm. Mm, that's definitely a reference I know and I agree with. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. Thanks, Tobis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on to our next animal. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of angels, I know I've been mentioning oh, God. this is an absolute angel. No. Uh, age 228 months old. Um, the great thing about angel his favorite types of food is anything and everything that's in front of him. Yeah, and what's that? A honey badger? Is that a honey badger? Is that what a honey badger is? Yes, it's a honey badger. Oh no! I came across. <laughs> I came across. Actually, funny that you mentioned it. I came across this honey badger right behind that Popeyes. Is that right? Now, yeah. that's that's interesting because yeah, we, LSU was famous for having a player whose nickname was Honey Badger, which uh, uh, I believe was Teron Matthew. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, I know for sure that it is Teron Matthew. And uh, when Teron Matthew was around, we did have we did keep a lot of uh, Honey Badgers on the LSU Football Tigers campus. Uh, just to make sure that folks was aware that w what we was calling him was actually a real scary animal. And that's probably one of those. Mm, yeah, but absolute angel, not to worry harmless gets a little rowdy when he has a lot of fun but an angel um in fact his nickname i like to call him houdini if i happen to misplace him <laughs> sometimes he loves hiding which actually brings me to another thing he is missing i mean oh, last no. time i saw him was on maple street he was trying to chase some radioactive bears i had him on a leash he got really excited i lost control of the leash and he went Zoom! so um you was telling me there's radioactive bears here in, in Louisiana? Oh, did I say bears? I meant bees. Not oh. to worry. Uh, Honestly, radioactive <laughs> that might be worse because bees is able to get a lot more places than bears is. Yeah, and remember like a month ago, there were the, these um, killer hornets? Oh, and yeah, murder you know hornets. I, I sure do. That's what they were. That's what they are. So, anywho, Angel's missing. Um, I would put a phone number on to say, like, if anyone sees Angel, give me a call. But honestly... Just adopt him. He's an absolute <laughs> precious creature that needs a forever home. And I yeah. think it's great if you just take him in. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, there's two options. If you see him, you can one, adopt him. That's true. But also you could run away. And if I was you, I would get yourself down inside your bunker, hide away, hide away from, from, because there's probably radioactive bees right around there too, because it's been chasing them. I mean, you got to be careful if there's radioactive bees and a big old honey badger out there. Oh boy. 
that's true. The, the killer hornets and the radioactive bees. Yeah, be careful. I uh-huh. wouldn't approach him if he's surrounded by that. But I mean, if he's on our own, on his own. Well, I suppose in. so. Well, Piper, we got, we got, uh, I, I, I seem to have noticed something of, of a pattern here where, in fact, what you're calling uh, uh, cute animals that need homes is actually real scary, gross animals that's probably dangerous. Uh, and I'm hoping we got time for one more. And I'm hoping that this last side is an actual cute animal that somebody might want to adopt. Well, what's great about this next animal is that if you're someone who's like, gee, Piper, I would love to have an animal, but I'm worried about responsibilities and Mm -hmm. taking care of it and breaking its little heart. Not to worry about this one. His name's Keith. Oh, okay. That's not so bad. Um, He kind of came into our facility, I'd say, two weeks ago. So Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to get to know Keith. Uh, He's named after Keith Richardson, if you got the connection there. Um, Keith Richardson? Keith Richards. Yeah. Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. Rolling Stones bassist. So no yeah. guitarist, lead guitarist. Exactly. Um, we don't know what his favorite food is. And I quickly found out it's impossible for Keith to die. Whoa. I well, know. Is, is Keith a cockroach? He is. And he's playing oh, okay. dead. He's playing dead. He's not actually dead in this picture. He's just playing dead. Wow. And then right after I took the picture, I was just tickling his little stomach and just Bleh! stuff like that. So, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. I, oh, looks hey, like. Can I can I chime in here, please? Sure. Uh, I gotta say that whole presentation that was pretty weird. There was a lot of freaky deaky stuff on there, but uh, I don't know. As soon as I saw that picture of Keith, I was like, "Hey, he doesn't really move, right? He just kind of lays there." I mean, he's little maintenance, honestly. Like. Part of the reason why I don't think he has a favorite food is I don't think he really eats much. And there was one time I accidentally dropped a book on him. He still survived. So I was like, Keith can't die. Wow. All right. Well, if he's still available for adoption, I think that little guy's going to my bunker with me. Awesome. I will talk to you about that. Um, And I believe that's the last bit of, yeah, please adopt please and i'm gonna stop sharing my presentation because it okay. is wow me. piper that was that was quite the presentation i really appreciate you coming on here with the presentation i wish that i had more time to actually ask you about it but we do need to get to our next guest so mm-hmm. uh uh but wow i mean i hope that your business succeeds i do think uh on the one hand it's uh not gonna because you're trying to get people to adopt real scary animals but on the other hand you know maybe people need guard dogs or something that would be a good use for 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 the honey badger Exactly. And after all, the thing about my business that stands out from many other businesses is that we take as many animals as we can, regardless of wild or domestic. We don't believe in stuff like that. We believe that if they have a true character, they deserve a a forever home. Okay, I got to ask you about your arm, though, because I just saw it and it looks like, did Keith do that or was it a honey badger? Um, both. Uh-huh. It, I'll play. I, like I mentioned before, they rough house a lot. So it's just like, keep them active, keep them going, but just a flesh wound. It's not a big deal. Well, Piper, I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay healthy. Uh, and I hope you get those those animals homes because that, that's nice. Now, I do have a question uh, coming to me uh, through my publicist at Ezra Potter on Twitter, at Ezra Potter on Instagram because somebody took Ezra Potter. Uh, uh, and that's coming to me from at Waddles Barkley, which is not Waddles like a duck, but W A T T L E S Barkley. Uh, sounds very European, yeah, it's interesting. That's one way to put it. Waddles Barkley, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's funny that you would you would know uh, know that because uh, well, she does look kind of like if you wasn't wearing your glasses. Uh, you know, I get a lot of people say that I have a lot of doppelgangers, so I'm actually not surprised. <laughs> well, that's that. Uh, uh, Waddles Barkley asks, if Lester was a wrestler, what would his gimmick be? Ooh, I, I've never thought about this before, but what I would do is I would be a wrestler who who buys his time getting taking hits, taking hits, you know? And then I pull out some spicy chicken strips, show them people's eyes. I like Piper, it. Piper, if you were a wrestler, what would your gimmick be? Um, I think I'd be um, Headshot McLaughlin. Um, because I come out like very calm. I come out very peppy, but then like that moment hits where I become a ferocious beast and I take down my opponents (laughs) with a kick. Very nice. 
very much uh, uh, like one of your 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 various pets there, I would say. Now uh, it is time for our next guest. So uh, Piper, stick around. If you got any questions for him, feel free to ask him. Uh, I just want to say real quick uh, that one guy kind of something said in the chat. You know, one of the great things about Louisiana is that there are many exotic animals that are legal to own. Uh, true. Now my next guest's name is Barry Watson. Uh, Barry is a senior safety manager somewhere. I don't know where, but uh, but Barry, please jump on the stream. G'day. Hey, y'all. Let's start. Y'all well about it? Yeah. Uh, hey, Barry. I did not understand what you just said. No, I was just saying hello. And uh, look, it's just a wonderful pleasure to be here on the show with uh, Lester Pips and his apocalypse tips. <laughs> I love the name, mate. Oh, You're thank right. you, Barry. Yeah, that's, uh, I appreciate that. You know, yeah. I like I like the fact that it tells you exactly what it is, but also rhymes. Well, that's it, mate. It, it's, it, look, it, it's a party and a business. Well, it's just it's beautiful. It tells you what you want. And you have a little giggle as well. <laughs> so now, now, Barry, you you are uh, are you you calling in from Australia during the workday? Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I'm just taking my lunch break now. It's uh, it's the afternoon, and uh, yeah, it's going well here. Just having a really good time, uh, checking up on people, making sure that everyone's uh, being safe. Well, that's great. That's great. So that's yeah. that's what you do, right? You you use a guy who runs the safety checks for a business, uh, a, a company. That's right. This is the company here. This is uh, the safety company I work at. You can see everybody's making look. Uh, old mate over here, he's making sure that the red lines are safe, and uh, uh -huh. he's. Well, that's not very, Kevin. That's not very safe. He, sh he shouldn't have your pants on the back of your chairs. That's not true. good. If your pants are on the back of your chair, then that means they may be not be on your legs. And, and if they're not on your legs, your legs are exposed. And if your legs are exposed, well, that's how you get hurt. That's absolutely right. Now, so that's uh, right. That you wanted to uh, you wanted to come on the show talk about what it what it is to be safe, which is very exciting. Yeah. I love my, my you know that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to get my listeners to know. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just about common sense, really, isn't it? You know, you know, if you're walking uh, down the street, uh, you just got to just open your eyes when you walk in. You don't want to close your eyes because then you might fall over. And when you fall, what happens, Lester? Well, then you might get hurt. That's right, mate. You just get a gold star. Congratulations. I'll tick you Ooh. off on that one. That's a good module complete. <laughs> oh, I, I love getting gold stars. Uh, that, well, that's very exciting. But how, how can I get another? You know, how can I can I get another? How can I well, get you another? You know, the gold star, it's not pointed because uh, points, points lead to oh, oh, pain. Oh, oh, getting stabbed. That's right. Points lead to pain, mate. Oh, pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to curve off those edges. Can't have anything too sharp. That's smart. So it's kind of, it's not so much like a, like a, a, a six pointed Jewish star. Uh, it's more of like a, a roundy uh, star that you no, might hold on, hold on, mate. I just want to make it clear that our, our stars are non-denominational. Oh, okay. No, oh, I just, 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 just for the record, we don't. We're an open star system. There's just it stars for everyone. Uh, okay. That hey, yeah, no, it's well documented on the show that uh that I am not Jewish, but I do know a lot about Judaism for some reason. Oh, really? Uh -huh. That's that's good. Yep. That, that's so uh, so so Barry, uh, so tell me a little bit yeah. about uh, what you've been doing during COVID. How's that been? Has it been more business? Oh, my has been a blast because like construction's been you know stopped for a little bit so if there's no construction there's no risks and mm -hmm. uh but unfortunately if there's no risks there's no rewards so you know i'm a bit of a pickle if you ask me uh he's a stickler for a pickler this old bloke <laughs> okay <laughs> that's a it. okay for a pickler but it's all right uh look at the end of the day i've just been I've, I've just taken it upon myself to go around and just make sure people in the neighborhood are doing the right thing you know go down the road and uh let myself in check out if the pool's got the right fence around it uh make sure you know uh people do a uv test make sure people have got the right sunscreen on all that kind of stuff because uh i'm sorry you know. did you say that you was, you was going around letting yourself into people's places checking on the pools yeah on, on the safety inspector, that's one of the uh, the perks of the job, if you will. It, it grants me access to uh, things just to make sure they're uh, safe. <laughs> you know? Sure, but uh, but it sounds like what you're telling me is that maybe, um, you know, it's not when they's expecting you to come down. I mean, <laughs> sorry, Lester, I'm just going to stop you there, mate. Uh, they're not expecting me. 
do you think they're expecting to hurt themselves when they hurt themselves? No, you, you unexpected things are unexpected for a reason. Yeah, well, I suppose expect, that's true. You, I mean, come on, I'm trying to save lives here, Lester, and you're you're bloody throwing me under the bus, and and you know what? You don't even give me a seatbelt for the bus. So who's who's supposed to win right now? Well, no, I'm not trying to win anything. I'm just saying it seems like maybe what your whole thing is is that you you's going into people's homes when they're not expecting you to be there, and you's maybe uh, snooping around. Look, I, it should be for, for the record. Uh, I don't know what it's like in America, but in Australia, every so, everyone signs up to the safety register. And uh, on that register, it actually uh, it's it's a, it allows me to go in. That, that's why I said I've got the right to do it. P- p- oh, so this is right. this is just a cultural difference in Australia. What you do is a hundred percent legal. Oh, it's a hundred percent legal. It's actually it's re- it's it's gotten me an award. Hang on, I'll look, here we go. Have a look at this one. There we go. I just had oh. it was it was sitting on the roof. <laughs> you know, oh, that's a big that's roof. a big trophy. It was sitting on the yeah. roof. So you, you this, reached your hand outside of the building to the top of the roof. You pulled that thing off it. Well, look, I'm a very tall man. I'm I'm six foot eight inches, mate. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Almost> <laughs> Careful, there. man. Yeah, you almost dropped it. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, I've got uh, a, I've got a little shield here for every year that I've been safe. Okay, yeah, it looks like there's, boy, oh boy, it looks like there's at least 16 st- shields on there. You got 16 uh, shields, you got a big old gold trophy cup, uh, and, and it's all on one piece of wood. Man, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, so, 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 so explain to me how you win one of those things. So, mate, it's a rigorous test, uh, Lester. It's a rigorous test. You've got to go into a, uh, a residence, uh, a, a business or, um, you know, domestic residence. Sure. And, uh, You've got to locate. Uh, it's a, are you familiar with war games, uh, Lester? Uh, I've seen the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, see what happens is basically there's uh, there's there's ten safety officers pitted to the test uh, uh, against each other, and you've got oh. to go into this place and you've got to find uh, fifteen safety breaches. Oh. Now, do you know what the challenge is? Uh, finding there are only breaches. ten. Oh, wow. So there's only 10. You find 10 and then you're still looking there for five more? Well, that's correct because there's always a safety breach whether you know it or not. For example, Lester, I'm just looking at your place right now. Oh, sure. Flowers. That that flower height to flower pot ratio, mate, that's a big no-no. As you, are you f- center of gravity, mate? You know, it's just going to fall. It's going to fall like a bloody eucalyptus in the Dane tree. You know, you're going to be in a world of trouble, mate. <laughs> well, let me tell you right right now, behind me, what you're seeing is actually not a real place. I've never been there. Okay, that's what? a fake Hold projection. On. Get, get, get out of here. That That's not real? No, no, no. That's a fake background because uh, what my real background, uh, I mean, what was really behind me here in the bunker is, is, is just too good for people to see because I don't want people to get jealous. Uh, but what it is, is it's a fully functioning Popeye's Louisiana kitchen franchise location underground. Oh wait, you work in a Popeyes? I don't work in one. I built one into my bunker, uh, and I'm you bringing built, it right, You built a Popeyes, mate. How many cans of spinach did you need to build that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a Popeye the Sailor Man joke. I get it. No, I don't have any spinach. It's just chicken and cream corn. Chicken and cream corn. Oh, that's good. That's very important. And yeah, so you I, got all my, I got all my uh, food categories covered. I got starches, uh, I got meats, and I got cream corn. What about? What about carbohydrates? Uh, that's uh, the that's the cream corn. Oh, that's oh my mistake. Sorry. Look, I know a lot about safety. Don't know much about nutrition. That's okay. Me neither. That's all right. Look, we'll get there one day, mate. I'll tell you, if I find anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll I'll send you a little uh, beat pop. How about okay, that? Okay. Yeah. So so tell me about uh, so this is. is you said that um, business that, that construction is paused right now, but business yeah. is good because you're able to get into lots of people's homes right now. And again, yeah. that is legal, which is so it's so confusing to me because I thought right. your whole thing went, might be that you're sneaking into people's homes, but uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, mate. I, I didn't come on this show to be tripped up. Are you trying? Are you trying to catch me out, mate? Well. This is uh, uh, this show is called Apocalypse Tips, Lesser Pips, but sometimes it's also been called uh, to catch a construction safety uh, manager. Well, wait a second. I'm kidding. I'm the, I made that up. <laughs> I made that up. Okay, I was doing that to catch a predator. Just doing a joke. 
Just yeah, do doing a, a to catch a predator joke. I don't yeah. tell a lot of jokes. I mostly only talk about very serious apocalypse tip survival <laughs> things. But sometimes I tell jokes. Oh, that's it. Well, look, it's important to laugh. You know, you know why? Because, because la- you know what they say about laughter. Uh-huh. Laughter is is one of the safest emotions. It's one of the safest. I have no one heard. get no, no one gets hurt laughing, do they? Well, you know that's interesting because uh, that's kind of the premise of one of the Batman villains is the Joker. He makes people get hurt by laughing. Really? Yeah, he gives people laughing gas. They laugh so hard they die. I'm not. I'm not. T- so I don't go. I don't go into the movies because I don't think they're very safe. Oh, is that right? Is it the movie theater yeah, or the I movies themselves that aren't safe? No, no, it was not the movies. <laughs> Sorry, the cinemas. Oh, okay. You know, you go into a cinema. It's just, it's there's a lot of problems in cinemas. You you wouldn't know this. This is a little uh, little uh, factoid coming from my brain to yours, mate. Love to um, hear it. Yeah. So, did you know that uh, 48.2 percent of cinemas uh, in in the northern hemisphere mm-hmm. uh, actually, basically, they've got too much film. And the more movies they get, because they got to archive everything, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the, the actual, um, it's too heavy, too oh, heavy yeah. for the. So then the whole the projection booth crashes down on people. Exactly. Oh, exactly. No. That's yeah, terrible. I, know. I don't uh, go to movies because I have a movie theater down here in the bunker. Uh, uh, but you know, I, I hope anybody who does go to movies when the when the COVID situation allows them to open back up doesn't get a whole thing crashing down on them. That's why you got to sit in the front row, safest row. Oh, interesting. I never thought about that. Because, yeah, you'd think the front row would be the least safe row because you're going to hurt your neck. Oh, no. <laughs> Safety's all relative, mate, at the end of the day. Sure, you get a bit of a sore neck, but you're still alive, mate. Look, I like to approach cinemas like airplanes. There's always a safest seat, you know? That makes sense, yeah. What's the safest seat on an airplane? Oh, it depends which kind of airplane you're talking about, mate. Well, Boeing you know, you've 747. You've got, you got, you got 737s, triple sevens, the whole Boeing variety. Don't even get me started on Airbuses. And then the DC-10s. Oh, mate, seat 42B. Really? Seat 42B on a DC-10? Okay. Yep, DC-10. Okay. Great plane. If I ever find myself on a DC-10, I'm going to make sure I get 42B. 42B. It's very good. Aisle seat. Uh, it's fantastic. Okay, well, that's very good. That's very good. Now, uh, uh, I do have a question coming to me, Barry, for from yes. uh, from uh, uh, my through my publicist at Ezra Party on Instagram uh, at Ezra Party on Twitter, uh, uh, and it's from a guy named Jeremiah, but it's spelled it's not spelled the way a lot of people spell Jeremiah. It's spelled J E R O M A I A dot D E T T O Jeremiah Detto. Uh, oh, what a, that's a that's a bit of a like, uh, that's all right. That's a bit of a confusing one, isn't it? Well, it's tricky because it's a it's a common name, but it's spelled uncommonly. But uh, oh, I did spell crazy. it, so if anybody's trying to find him, I bet they could. Uh, and it's interesting, actually, Barry, because he looks like if you just wasn't wearing construction man gear. Hold on, what? <laughs> that's, and well, look, I, people have told me that I've got a recognizable face. Oh, I guess you do. That's a very, very, very recognizable smile you're doing right now. But Jeremiah Detto wants to know, uh, how do you know when a car is safe? And that's interesting that he would ask me that and not you, but he did ask me that. And uh, uh, well, for me, I know a car is safe when it's not on fire, because if it's on fire, then you're going to burn. That's right. Yep. Well, the funny thing is, though, cars are always on fire. What? When they're working. What? What do you say? it's a combustion engine, mate. It's a combustion engine, so the car's always firing. What? So, so every car's unsafe? Well, by your logic, it is. Do you know how Damn. I know a car's safe or not? Yeah, please tell me, because I gotta, I gotta re, I gotta rethink my metric. If the windows are down, the car is safe. Oh, okay, but what if the windows are down and there's a big fire on the roof? Well, this car's still safe because you can get out. Good point. Good point. That's Good right, point. mate. Well, from you now can on, yell, folks at you home, can scream, that's what you need. And you can smell. See, so one thing people don't understand, Lester, sorry to just to, to, to harp on about safety. Go for but, you it, know, go for it. Two things. Number one, when it comes to safety, I mean, it's all about being safe. And the tea wide, you know why we add that on? Because it's people saying thank you. That's all it is. It's safe tea. Safe thank you. At oh, the end of the day, that's, that's how it works. Little tip. I never thought about that. That's, that's very interesting. Well, I... 
Well, Barry Watson, I mean, thank you so much for that tip. That's important. Everybody, folks at home, uh, say say safe thank you to everybody who you want to keep safe. And if, if you see a car with its windows down, go ahead and get in, even if it's on fire. That's right. All right. Well, uh, uh, I want to get all my guests back on here real quick um, uh, because it is that time where uh, we, we end the show. I mean, look, we are technically a little bit over time, so we've got to go a little bit quick. But um, I want everybody to get back on here. Uh, there's no show after us, so it's okay to go a little bit over, but not very far over. Um, uh, Barry, we're going to start with you. Is there any last word of advice you'd like to give for folks at home and or anything that you think they sh should maybe try to find on the internet? Oh, try to find on the internet? Yeah, some um, people call this section plugs. Oh, plugs. Yeah, look, um, one of the most important things as we come into summer is to make sure we're all sun safe. So if you want to get on board, uh, Google Slip Slot Slap. Slip, slop, slap. Uh, it's it's a fantastic Australian sun safe campaign. So get around that. Um, but also that Jeremiah bloke sounded pretty cool. So give him a follow. He sounds pretty safe. Yeah, I bet he is. I bet he is safe. Uh, based on his picture, he seems safe. Uh, Piper, uh, your turn. Any last words of advice for listeners at home? Anything you want them to try to find on the internet? Well, at the end of the day, I think it's important to be compassionate and understanding about all creatures, human beings. Life is already hard enough. That's I think true. it's important to really express love. And Waddle Sparkly also sounds pretty safe and definitely doesn't have COVID. So I think that's fair too. Well, that's great. I, I agree. Uh, uh, I hope Waddle Sparkly does not have COVID. Uh, Tobis Jonas, uh, anything that you yeah. would like folks to know, last words? I mean, I hope they're not your last words. I hope you don't die from COVID. Uh, or anything you want them to find on the internet? Yeah, uh, I guess like for safe, you know, last words of safety going forward is uh, don't get tested. Well, and I just want to, if I'm going to throw a plug out there, I want to say, go Marlins, go Marlins 2020. Oh, Tobis. Oh, you tricked me. Uh, I really didn't. <laughs> you you walked right into that. You tricked me. This is a tricking show. <laughs> It, it's not, Tobis. You walked yourself into that one all alone, my friend. And I do want to say, if you think you're feeling a little bit sick, maybe you got a cough, maybe you got a chill, maybe something like that, get tested. Because if you got COVID, you want to know, okay? Because A, you can treat it. B, you can not spread it. That'd be great. Also, um, look, if you're thinking about voting this uh, coming election, do that. Vote for Biden <laughs> Harris, please. We got to get Donny J fuckface out of the White House. God damn it. Uh, I don't want to get too into politics, but fucking vote. Uh, also, I want to say thank you to all my guests one more time. Thank you each and every one of you for being here. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat. Uh, that one guy, kind of something. Anja Fleek. Uh, 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 <laughs> Detonator TV. Uh, please, she ate you. Uh, Anja Fleek says rock the vote. Exactly. <laughs> I'm doing that well however i can uh, uh uh in my limited capacity within the bunker uh and also uh thank you to the pack theater for letting us continue to have this stream now if you if you was listening earlier to the show you know but i'm gonna repeat it we switch into thursdays starting next week we're gonna have a tuesday and a thursday next week and then after that it's gonna be thursdays going forward very excited about it tune in thursday six o'clock get in here on the chat we're trying to talk to y'all uh and that is all so we're gonna end the show the way we always do with me just kind of turning the stream off bye hey it's lina have a good one take care bye go marlins oh